And so I finally realized after three years, if I was going to get well, it wasn't going to be as a result of medicine. I mean, it could have happened in spite of medicine, but it certainly wasn't going to happen because of medicine. So I didn't really know where to turn at first, but I started thinking about nutrition. Now, I started studying nutrition. It was, it was probably a little bit unusual. Most kids were out playing baseball and soccer. I was studying nutrition at 16. And I'll tell you why. It's a short story. But when I was 14, I grew eight inches that year. And I looked like a stick with a nose. <laughs> and, you know, hormones are starting to kick up. And the last thing I wanted to do, I wanted to attract girls. So I started thinking about how can I build a little more anything, right? <laughs> that was, you know, I had eight inches, not a pound. I was like 5'11", 100 pounds, something like that. So I started studying nutrition. And seven years later, 10 years later, I've driving right to school. I've gone through this three years of medical treatment. And now I'm thinking, well, maybe I need to go back and look at nutrition. I did. And here's what I found out. I was doing everything the nutrition textbooks said I should be doing. And yet I was sicker than anybody I knew. And I thought, well, why has nutrition failed me? I took it personally. Why has it failed me? Right? I can explain that too. How many of you, there's a few of you in here old enough to remember the first oven cleaner commercials? And remember these? You know, this is back back in the late 70s, 60s, early 70s. They had these commercials, they, you, you, this was the first time you could open your door, oven door, spray this incredibly toxic stuff, close the door, come back, you know, a couple hours later and wipe it off, right? And, but here's how they advertise this. They would show a woman playing tennis, and they'd freeze spray and she'd say, I'm cleaning my oven. And there'd be another one riding a horse, and then she, they'd freeze from her and she'd say, I'm cleaning my oven. So they can do the same thing today. I can picture this. A woman would play tennis and she'd say, I'm causing cancer. And another one would be going, I'm creating heart disease. Because 80% of Americans will die of cancer, heart disease, or stroke. Statistically, I mean, nobody here has to do that. But people out there are making conventional choices. They're going to. They keep doing it. So although I frequently hear Bizarre things, things that don't make any sense, like my brother just died of cancer and he was perfectly healthy. As if you could go to bed perfectly healthy one night and wake up dead the next day with cancer. Right? It doesn't happen that way, does it? You see, what people fail to realize is that cancer and heart disease and these chronic conditions that take us down these things don't happen overnight. You don't wake up on the wrong side of the bed. You know, you're not unlucky. These things happen as a result of the choices that we make every single day. And they typically take 10 or 20 or 30 years to develop. I can still remember when I was in college. I was down in Rehoboth Beach, Delaware. And it was after Labor Day and there was nobody around. And I was roaring down the street on my motorcycle at 60 miles an hour. Was, there wasn't nobody around. Fortunately for me, there was a cop around. And the cop pulled me over and he said, that's reckless driving. The speed limit here is 15 miles an hour. And I said, but I didn't know that. And guess what he did? He gave me the ticket anyway. Right? You all heard before that ignorance of the law is no excuse. It's no, it doesn't save you. Well, the same thing is true with the laws of nature. It doesn't matter if you don't know that the way you're eating causes disease. It will. It doesn't matter whether you know that, or you believe that. There are laws that govern every living organism, and they govern our bodies as well. 